Hello everyone, my name is Tian Hatang. I am the author of a series of textbooks entitled um, Biblical Hebrew for All. Thanks for watching and in this uh, video we are going to investigate the whole concept of divorce in the Old Testament. The purpose of this video then is twofold. First of all, we want to show that the concept of divorce in the Hebrew Bible is completely different from what we uh, know as um, divorce today in the modern world. And secondly, we want to show how modern English translations didn't really um, give us a good sense of exactly what the Hebrew Bible is saying about divorce and they would often um, come up with translations that are completely incorrect or misleading. To fully understand what the Hebrew Bible would like to tell us about divorce, um, it's obvious that we first have to go and look at the situation of women in the Old Testament. Um, we are talking about ancient times, the Iron Age, which is somewhere between 1200 and 300 BC. So um, that is completely uh, different from what we are experiencing today. So let's go and look at women in the Old Testament. To save some time, I'm just using a screenshot from my website to show you some um, facts about women in the Hebrew Bible. Um, the Hebrew Bible is predominant, predominantly a patriarchal um, document. In other words, it's dominated by males. Um, and. Um, to sum up the situation of women in the Hebrew Bible, we can go to the old Chinese rule of the three obediences. When young, a woman will obey her father. When married, she will obey her husband. And when her husband is dead, she must obey her son. Um, in ancient times, women's roles and functions were limited to the home. You can read um, more about that here. Uh, what we really are interested in is the legal standing of women in the um, ancient times. And we learn that um, legally, the wife was the property of the husband. Uh, he was her master or owner, and she was his child. Or personal possession. Um, you can read more about that there. And then more specifically about divorce, um, the Bible tells us that the man alone had the right of divorce. This is partly due to the commercial form of marriage, whereby the woman belongs absolutely to the man. Um, so go and have a look at that. So let us now go and have a look at some specific texts in the Hebrew Bible. We will focus on two of them, which will give us a very good indication of what the situation about divorce was at that time. Uh, first of all, we have to mention that um, actually in the Hebrew Bible, there is no one single word that we could uh, translate with divorce. Um, it is clear that um, in the societies in which the narratives of the Hebrew Bible took place, men could, without much effort, rid themselves of their spouses. Um, because of their position in society, women were never, never given an equal opportunity. In the Hebrew Bible, three verbs are used in 15 instant instances to describe the action of a man actually divorcing his wife. These instances can be tabulated as follows. So there are three verbs. Um, the first one is garash, 
which means to drive out. And there are um, five places where we find this verb in the, in the Hebrew Bible. The second one is shalach, to send away. Um, also um, found in the most famous uh, reference to divorce in Malachi 2.16. And the last one is karat, to cut off, a very um, well-known verb in the Old Testament, used more than 800 times, and we will look at that one in Deuteronomy uh, 24, verse 1. So let's um, look at um, the most famous, in my opinion, the most famous um, mention of um, divorce in the Hebrew Bible in the Old Testament which is found in Malachi 2 verse 16. So this is the first line in the Hebrew Bible of Malachi 2 16. It reads Ki, Sanei, Shalach, Amar, Yahweh, Elohei, Israel. For for hate send away he said Yahweh the God of Israel um, that is all that we find in the in the Hebrew text so let's go back to um, the website and um, you will see that we have um, the three words that are the beginning of this um, this text. Um, because no problem, he hates no problem, and he not he send away just send away. Um, this is what the King James Bible says: he hateth putting away the new american standard bible says for i hate divorce and the new international version says the man who hates and divorces his wife um, the king james bible of course is a very literal uh, translation so it is quite uh, correct um, this one there is no i in the hebrew um, and the NIV has changed um, the text completely. Um, we will see later that it's not about the man who hates um, his wife. Um, the important thing is this verb, shalach. Um, Let's read what I've got in the, in the website. In the context of the last words of the preceding verse, verse 15, namely, against the wife of your youth, we could conclude that the wife is the object of the sending away action, which is a description of what happens when a man in the, those days divorces his wife. Um, as I've said previously, this verb is very common, 847 times in the Hebrew Bible. Um, and this verb is in the PL form, which is usually a command. Um, the most famous example being the words of Moses to Pharaoh, where he says, let my people go, Exodus 5 verse 1. Um, so, we use, or the, um, the author of this book used this verb to express the concept of a man getting rid of his wife, sending his wife away. Um, and this is the most famous um, example. Now let's have a look at um, another verse, Deuteronomy 24 verse 1 which will give us another um, insight into this whole 
concept of divorce in the Old Testament. In Deuteronomy 24 verse 1, we find the following words. Ve karat la sefer keritut. And he will write to her or for her writing of divorcement. Back to the website, um, we have, and he will write, no problem, to her, for her, um, a writing of, this means um, something has been written, this is a, uh, in English we could call this a adjective, and then we have this word, divorcement. Um, let me first of all say that the English translations had no problem with this. Most of them have got it right. But we are interested in this noun. Um, the root of the noun, you can see there is a uh, kaf, a resh, and a taf, karat which means to cut, cut down, cut off, okay. Often in um, Hebrew, um, the language will take a, a root, a basic fundamental meaning, in this case karat, to cut, and then use that root to make other words, in this case uh, a noun, um, and the only way we can translate this noun is by divorcement. It's only found here uh, in Deuteronomy and in Isaiah um, 50 verse 1 and in Jeremiah 3 verse 8. This is the verse that um, the Pharisees used in Matthew 19 verse 7. Um, to try and trick Jesus um, and also it's also found in Mark 10 verse 4 and they said unto him why then did Moses command to give a bill of divorcement and to put her away so that is a correct um, quote because um, the Hebrew says the Old Testament says a certificate or a bill of divorcement and um, put her away, cut her off, send her away, um, referring to the wife. So with those few notes, I hope I have shown that um, when we read our modern English translations, we should be very cautious. Um, you are welcome to Go to my website, biblicalhebrewforall.com, where you will find much more comprehensive notes on the subject. Um, click on any link that says Volume 5, and you will find um, the, the discussions of the texts in Malachi and in Deuteronomy. Thank you very much for watching, and stay safe.